there's so much excitement with Jaden Daniels, deservedly, that we haven't talked about kind of the things that weren't good. Yeah. And, and I want to talk specifically about Emmanuel Forbes. He's become this flashpoint. And I think it's unfair. He's wildly inconsistent. Emmanuel? Yeah. Yeah. Because, dude, he was good on the first drive. You know, but that, He was legit good. They tested him. That he is, was there. He was in position. That is the life of a cornerback. But not – you can't be to his level of inconsistent where it's good game, bad game. I, I just – I don't know what you do there because the play where he got turned around in a circle on on the fade for the touchdown later was equally bad to the good coverage early on. I was impressed, perhaps more so, that he seemed a willing participant in exactly. run support. Yeah, yeah. But, like, what happens that in the same game that could change so dramatically? What I, what I noticed with him, he's a guy that seems like he's thinking through everything instead of just reacting. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Because the fade route, if he just turns and runs, he's he's in position to knock that ball down. He just like, but what he does, he, it's like he, when he goes to try and touch somebody, he misses him, he gets lost. You know, and that's what uh, I think. Um, when I was with who was it? Either I can't remember if it was Tanner or Fred saying this, where you watch some cornerbacks when they're in position, and the moment they, like the player, the player give them a moment, get past them, they panic, and the first thing they do is grab. Okay, what he does, he when he goes to hit somebody, he misses them, he completely panics. Instead of just turn and run, you have speed, dude, and you have length. So if he just turn on that play, he was there, but he just was still trying to touch the guy instead of get head back and. And get the, get, uh, they, 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 so there's a, a technique for that, right? Yeah. Like when you get beat off the line, you're trying to play through their hands. Yeah. And, and you don't have to decide. Like you've lost the ball. You're going to get beat. Play to their hands. Look for their hands to go up. Play to their hands. And it's almost like when he when he's able to maintain his composure off the line of scrimmage, uh-huh. he can stick with it. Yeah. But sure. when he gets beat off the line of scrimmage – he doesn't stick with his technique. Whatever, Whatever's there goes out the window. But, B, what worries me more is, and we saw this at a joint against Garrett Wilson, mm-hmm. when he does get beat off the line of scrimmage, then he just doesn't want to play at the line of scrimmage. And then you start seeing these these soft zones and stuff where, where he's just given – I he I, has, he I, has just, get, I don't know. He I, has to get the mindset of a corner, which is forgetful. Dude, you let some, if something happens, it's gone. You move to the next Corners point. are the – until I learned more about sprinters over the last two weeks and, and a young man from Alexandria, I always thought corners were the cockiest people on the planet. Yeah. And that's the mindset you have to have at that yeah. position. You have to have it. And it seems like he's in his head a little bit. I, I think, you know, the talk of it is that he – if he can see a ball and track it, he's better than anybody out there. But the problem with the cornerbacks, they're normally playing with their back to the ball. And it's a thing that they say catch the flash of the football. You know what I mean? He has to learn to turn and see and then aim at what he what that object is instead of having to track the ball all the way in. Because he's not going to have that many chances for that. And I think the thing about him, when they're doing like cross and stuff, he is on the receiver. Because now he can run with them and see it. But when he don't see the ball, he doesn't react very well. And he got to learn to do do that and learn how, like you said, play through the receiver. Don't – when you're running and you see that guy, he tells you what the ball is doing. Because if he's concerned about it, he always gets beat. He I think slows up. Horizontally, he yeah. stays in position. Yeah. Like you're talking about the crossers yeah. Yeah. or somebody runs an out on him or something. But I, I think when it's vertical stuff – Got it, problems. It, dude, it's in his – I don't know, right? And he, he's a he, he's played one year. He's got new coaches teaching him new things now. But of the four of the four corners that have emerged as like certainly parts of this roster going forward, Mike Davis, Benjamin St. Juice, Sam are still, and then Forbes. It's hard not to have the most concern about Forbes because the lows are really low, and and that doesn't mean it can't be changed. But, like, you base it off of last year, which you could put on a fair amount of it as coaching, right? Like, 
whoever made the decision to go one-on-one with the probably least physically imposing cornerback in the NFL with arguably the most physically imposing wide receiver in the NFL, Uh whatever it was, five, six weeks into his NFL career, I think that was a big mistake, Mm -hmm. right? Um, But there's nothing preventing him from improving now. The what Two things drive me crazy. I I think people incorrectly try to make this about effort or attitude. If there was effort or attitude questions – we would hear it from the staff, uh-huh. frankly. Joe Witt would uh, Joe Witt would not tolerate that. Dan Quinn would not tolerate that. I, I, I don't buy into that. Um, we're also in the middle of a windstorm here at Los Rhino. B. Mitch is using all of his former NFL player strength to hold on to this umbrella. Shout out to the umbrella. Um, <laughs> now I'll try to hold it to blow away. But, uh, you know, I just think – he's become this flashpoint on social media and this stuff happens and it kind of sucks, but that's just life in the big city. It happens, bro. I, I don't think he has played up to the potential. A lot of folks thought he had coming out of the draft. He was a number. He was a first round pick graded Mm -hmm. coming out of the combine. That's, that's how more than just this thing. That's how the whole (laughs) league looked at him. Um, but the inconsistencies, because the people that just want to scream, don't play him, don't play him, are going to ignore that he looked good early on. Mm-hmm. He did. That happened. We saw it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, damn, he looked poor later. And I think they, I want you playing. they kept him I mean, on the field because they want to see more. You have to play him. You have to see if he's going to be able to correct things. You're going to have to see if he's not going to let one thing snowball into a bigger thing. And because you have to make some damn real decisions on stuff like this. And you have to play him as much as you can. And listen. One thing about f- football, pro football, you go out there, you perform, we judge you. And normally you are going, it, it, like, maybe, like, oh, man, they cut me. No, you cut yourself. They kept me. No, 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 you kept yourself. If you perform properly, they keep you. If you don't, they let you go. Can't blame nobody but you. And the only way they're going to find that out is by putting him out there and putting him in that position to go out and show them whether he can handle it or not handle it. I agree, B. I, I think, you know, I think there's a real question with Forbes, but I don't think it's a real question about a roster spot because when you look at this corner group, I mean, he's a first rounder under control for two more years, potentially three, although they're certainly not tracking towards a fifth year option at all. Um, Forbes stuff was a concern and not a concern because I think people are trying to oversimplify like, Oh, he just sucks. No, he doesn't. Did you watch early on when he looked pretty good? He was damn good. The inconsistencies are, are, are the very, the variable, the, the delta in his good to bad is is far too wide. And I don't know that that can be fixed. Um, and I don't know that you can really count on him as a piece of this thing going forward if that can't be fixed. I think the kicker's a, 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 a problem. I also want to talk about Jamin Davis, who made a couple important plays early on, um, but was playing in the fourth quarter. I don't think it makes a problem that he played in the fourth quarter because they are trying to find out if he can really do something at a high level. You have to put him through that test. And let's be real. He's just like a rookie. He's playing a new position. You don't play him three, four plays to take him out the game because I want to know, can he have – he hasn't been – I know that. Now I want to see him consistently set the edges. There were times when he said it, he was unbelievable. He set the edge, came early on, tackle, for times. sure. Then other times he set the edge, but then he, he lost him. He got lost inside, and the guy was able to jump outside. You want him to be able to go out there and work those things out. You know, people look at the quarter based off, okay, well, he's a guy playing in the fourth quarter. You think Jamin has bought into what they're doing. He wants to show he can do something. He probably knew he was going to play a long time because the people that back him up probably wouldn't even out on the field. <laughs> so I don't think you're asking a guy to convert positions, learn new stuff, mm-hmm. and a guy that, whether it's his fault or not, maybe coach had let him down or put him in positions that he didn't excel at, like, they've asked him to learn different positions before, and it didn't go well. So he mm-hmm. should take the work. 